Hey guys, welcome to Farm Charm Chic. I'm Emily. In today's episode, I have some cherry tiered tray items for you. They are so easy to recreate and they are so beautiful. I absolutely love how it turns out and I think you're going to love it too. There's also a playlist, so stay tuned for details on that. If you like crafting, DIYs, dupes, hacks, thrift flips, or just creating in general, I would love if you would consider subscribing. And if you do like any of the projects in today's video, be sure to let me know by hitting that thumbs up. But let's get started. I found this darling little sign. This also came from Hobby Lobby. It was $4.99, but I bought it when the table decor was 50% off, so $2.50. I was thinking you could even make this with using like the jumbo craft sticks and some Jenga blocks from Dollar Tree, but I honestly think it might be more expensive and a lot more time. But if you have those items, you can make this as well rather than making a trip special just to Hobby Lobby. So I taped off the base of this and it was the exact number of letters to spell cherries. And so I, that's what I'm gonna put on here. And so I'm going to make it match my decor so don't be afraid of buying stuff when you go to a store and you see something and you think oh that's cute but it doesn't match my decor or I don't really want that word on there kind of be thinking when you have a specific theme in mind like like me when I went I you know had I wanted to do cherry or cherries on something and when I saw that and it was the exact amount of letters I knew I could make it work for my decor so just don't be afraid when you see things of buying them with the intent to change them that's totally fine after sanding down those little letters there and getting that black paint and the white letters off, I'm just going to take some lacquer paint from Waverly's Chalk Paint, but whatever color you're doing will work just fine. It doesn't even have to be chalk paint. And I'm just going to paint each of these little letter tags here. I just give them two coats to get a really good base coverage. Now I make a mistake right here. So I thought, oh look, I'm done painting. I can take my painter's tape off. I'm just checking to see if I have any bleed through. At this point, I'm really pleased with myself, not even thinking I have more painting to do. I should have left that painter's tape on. So if you're doing this, you'll learn from my mistake here. Leave your painter's tape on until all the painting is completely done. I don't know why I took it off. I guess I just thought that that part was done and so I wasn't gonna need it. Now I have these stencils from Dollar Tree. You guys have seen me use these a bunch of times. I love this font, but as you can see where it's on one sheet, I'm not gonna be able to get each individual letter to lay flat how I need to on these little uh, block tags thing whatever they are here that we're putting our letters on. So I'm just going to slice the stencil down. Now to stencil, I'm just taking a stenciling brush. This came from Dollar Tree and I cut it flat so the bristles are completely flat. I'll put my base color of paint on and then I dab it on just like a paper towel or a baby wipe or something like that to get excess off because you don't wanna glob your stencil on, you wanna work with layers of paint. So start out light. And I just do an up and down pouncing motion. I'm just holding the stencil down with my finger and I'm just showing you this first letter here. I won't show you in detail all of these letters, just so that way you can kind of get the basis for how I'm doing this. Once you have your desired coverage, you just lift that stencil up and you should have a perfect thing there. Now, this is where I realized I made a mistake here is because see how my stencil brush, I'm getting paint all over the part that was taped off. If I had left my tape on there, I wouldn't have a problem at all. So it did wipe off fairly easily. So I did um, just use a baby wipe and just got that off there. And then of course I go back and retape it so that way I won't have any future problems. So you can see where I made that mistake. So just leave your tape on as long as you can. Because even though I didn't think I would be getting paint anywhere near that base, you know, the stenciling, you know, you just never know. So I just continue on with each of the letters there. You can see this ends up spelling the word cherry. I think it's so cute. And if you have any little touch up points you need to do, you can just go in and touch those up if you had a little bit of splatter. But I love how this turns out. It is something custom. It's something I made. It was not very expensive for the base piece and I absolutely love it. It's gonna look so cute on my tiered tray. I wanna take just a few seconds and remind you that this is part of a playlist and the playlist is five under five DIY challenge. What that means is all of the creators in the playlist this month have created five fruit themed tiered tray DIYs and each of their DIYs costs less than $5. My good friend Missy from the Crafty Cove and I host this challenge on the fifth of every month and we always choose a co-host to come and host with us. This month we chose Char from Crafting Up a Storm with Char. You guys, I'm gonna leave a link to her channel down in my description box. So click on that, go subscribe to her and give her some love and support. She does amazing DIYs and she is so talented. 
The playlist link will also be down in my description box. And you guys, there are some amazing DIYs coming through that I have seen, and you're going to love them all. And even if one fruit maybe isn't your total gem, see what I did there, fruit and gem. Anyway, <laughs> even if one of them is not your thing, uh, you can kind of implement, you know, if it's lemons, you can kind of change it to be strawberries, you know, or watermelon or whatever. There are so many different things and ideas. So the link to that will be down in my description box. So let's get right back to the DIYs. At Hobby Lobby, I found these cute little cutting boards. Now, cutting boards are the rage. I've seen people find them at Target. I've seen people find them even at Walmart. So wherever you can find, you might even have some laying around your house. This is just a little teeny mini size. I'll even leave a link below to some that I found on Amazon that are a little bit bigger than this. And I made this cute little graphic on Canva. Now, I figured out how to link these, and I'll link it down in my description box, so that way you can have access to these graphics too if you happen to like them or want to use them. If you're familiar with Canva, uh, it'll be very easy for you, but I'll just leave that link down in my description box. I placed a circle around this one so I would know kind of where to cut. I could have even just glued it onto the cutting board and then sanded it off like you've seen me do before. Would have worked just fine too, but I just decided to do it this way this time. And then I'm just going to use some of the purple Elmer school glue when I glue this down to give a good firm hold to it. This I feel is a little bit better than Mod Podge since it is just regular paper that I did it on. If you did it on like cardstock or something, Mod Podge would probably work just as fine as well. I have used this purple school glue for years and I have never had a problem with a project like coming up or anything. I do seal my projects with Mod Podge after, so that might help in that. But I've had a few people uh, message me and ask me if I've ever had a problem with anything like lifting up and I personally have not. Now I'm just using my brayer to flatten that out and you can see some of the excess glue comes out a little bit there and I just take a baby wipe this does dry clear but I just don't want any like goopiness around the edges if that makes sense so I just take a baby wipe and wipe that off I didn't really need to cut the twine holder off when I cut the tag off, so I could have left that on. But since I did cut it off, I just make a new little twine holder just by looping it through uh, the hole and then pulling it through as you saw me do there. I do end up cutting it a little bit shorter from the first time that I do it. I realized that I didn't like where the knot was, so I make it just a little bit shorter and kind of customize it there just to add a little something to it. Now, after I get this done, I still feel like it's a little bit, you know, plain I guess and you can jazz this up however fits your decor but I just got another little bit of twine and I just wrapped it around that handle I mean this is just for decor even though it said it was food safe in the beginning the stuff we've done to it it clearly is not food safe anymore so I'm just wrapping some twine around it just to give a little bit of texture and a little bit of something else I guess and I just tie it in the back so that way it adds just a little bit more detail to it what do you guys think of this? I think it turned out really cute. I love that cute little graphic there. Again, I'll leave the link down in the description box for that. But I think this turned out darling and it's going to match perfectly with all of the other cherry items I have. If you're ever needing to do like artificial fruits or veggies or anything for some decor, tiered tray, anything like that, remember to check this aisle at your local craft store. You can see I found some cherries there at my local Hobby Lobby. They were $6.99 and they were 50% off. Now see those eggs there? Those eggs are way better than the eggs you find at Easter time. So just remember to check out this aisle because there are some great deals here. They have artificial breads, artificial cheeses, anything that you would need for your decor. And it is so realistic looking. I absolutely love all the different things here and sometimes these things go on clearance so we just remember to check this aisle because there are so many fun things there i picked up this little bowl this is from the spring section this uh season at hobby lobby it was $1.99 and then it was the 40 percent off so i'm just going to use this little bowl it's just a teeny size perfect for a tiered tray and i'm just going to take my cherries that i bought and i'm going to use not quite all of them but a lot of them and i'm just going to make a little bowl of cherries for my tiered tray because how can you have a tiered tray without adding as many cherry things as you can right <laughs> so i'm just going to open these up and i'm just going to stack them in here and this is not rock Rocket science anybody can do this it takes me a couple of times to kind of put them in because they have these little stems on the ends of the cherries so I decided it would be best to kind of set them in where I tucked those stems in so that way you could just see the cherry portion now I was lucky because cherries are small so they fit in this smaller size bowl just fine so if you're doing a different fruit a lot of times the craft stores or even Dollar Tree I've seen will do miniature fruit so they'll have like miniature limes or miniature lemons something like that miniature peaches that you can get even little apples 
to put into a little bowl. So you'll just size the bowl to your size of decor, obviously. And you could jazz this up a little bit with putting like some Ray Dunn font on the front of it saying, you know, like bowl or I don't know, tart, something cute, cherry, something on there if you wanted to. I wanted to be able to switch this little bowl out for different seasons and different times. So I just left it plain. This turns out so cute. It is so simple and so easy and literally <laughs> Anybody can do this one. This is so easy, but really it adds a big impact. I'm excited for you to see this on my little tiered tray that I have. One thing I love to do is I love to find little glass pieces like this at the thrift store. Each of these pieces cost a dollar or less for each one of them. And they are so like, you know, that really detailed crystal. And I wanna make some faux jadeite out of them. So I'm going to just clean them all up, remove the price tag and wipe them all down. And then we're going to make them look like jadeite. The key to getting that faux jadeite look is to use this pistachio color by Krylon. It matches my jadeite almost perfectly. It is very, I'll, I'll show you a comparison in the end. I have a little picture of, of my faux jadeite with my real jadeite and it blends in beautifully. So I just do a couple of light coats on each of these pieces. So I'll just, now just remember these are not gonna be food safe after you do this. So I feel like I just wanna say that and get that out of the way, but these look so good. And it's just a couple of light coats to get that really thick color Color that's on there so you can kind of see now this butter dish I did the inside and then I ended up going and doing the outside as well now the key you could leave it like this but what really sets this apart and helps it match jadeite is to add a little bit of a sheen to it and so to do that I'm just using this clear glaze that's by Krylon and I give a couple coats of this on top of that and this is going to seal that paint obviously but it's going to give that really nice crystal clear um, like shiny look to it that jadeite has and here's just kind of a look after this is all dried what it looks like the color is not the best here this is just in my garage but you can see there's kind of that shiny sheen on it I've got a little stuck there but look at I just think this turned out so pretty so what I'm going to do now is just take these back into my studio and I'm just going to clean up the tops that go to like the salt and pepper shakers and the little other items there and just put those back on now you don't have to just do this on glassware. You can get this jadeite look on anything that you can spray paint really. I've done it on a few risers before. It looks really cute. This color that Krylon has is such a good color. Here are my pieces all set up here with their little tops and everything on there. I think this looks beautiful. I've even seen some people do a copper color on the top fixtures to kind of give a different color tone, which would be beautiful as well. But I really love this. Now here are these pieces mixed in with a couple of the original jadeite pieces that I have. You can see that the color varies on those pieces and it, I think it matches beautifully. Don't forget that I'm on Instagram also. I love to meet new Insta friends, so I would love for you to come over and say hi, check out my page, and see all the latest projects that I'm working on. I'll be sure and leave a link down in my description box so you can easily find me. If you guys have watched me, you know that anytime I do tiered tray decor, I always love to incorporate a beaded garland somehow. I just love them and I love coming up with different ways to kind of do different variations. Now I'm doing some painted beads for this garland. So all I'm doing is I just took a barbecue skewer and I just taped in between each of the beads so I can paint them easily there. I found this is one of the better ways to get the coverage that I like and to be able to get all around the tops and bottoms without completely getting my hands all messy. Now, now I did, did need to change the paint color that I had a little bit there. I wanted it to be a little darker. So you can always lighten or brighten or darken paint by adding you know, some white to it. I added a little bit of like charcoal gray to this to kind of get the desired color that I wanted. But you can see how easy those beads are once they dry. You just slide them right off the barbecue skewer. And I'm just placing them in the order that I want to make sure I have enough beads for the length of garland that I want to do. This is also the point that my 10 year old daughter came downstairs and goes, oh mom, are you doing a Christmas video? <laughs> no, <laughs> it's cherries, but it works, I promise. <laughs> it does look very Christmassy though. So I have this round that came from Dollar Tree and I'm going to paint that same color of green because I want green to really be an accent color with the red for the cherries. So I'm just painting the rim of this little round here and after it dries fully, I'm just going to take some painter's tape around the edge so that way I don't have any like thing that goes over the edge because I'm gonna 
paint the flat portions of this white. Hopefully this makes sense. So this kind of stops any paint from dripping down onto the sides there. And I have done it where I painted the flat surfaces first and then the edge, and that did not work out well for me. So this actually worked out pretty good. Now I printed this design on tissue paper and I have a full uh, tutorial on how to print on tissue paper. I'll leave the link down in my description box. But this is a graphic that I made on Canva and I can leave a link to it down in my description box for you. So if you would like to use it as well, you are more than welcome to. I thought this saying was super cute, just the pretty please with a cherry on top, because how many times have we said that in our lifetime when we really want something really bad and I thought it would just be perfect for this little tiered tray. After I use the water to kind of get my little design out, I am just going to put a very light coat of Mod Podge on here. And then I have this little Cricut tool. It's from like stamp collecting or something. I'm sure you can find them in any office supply store. And I just use that to place down my tissue paper and I start in the middle and I just very easily work my finger. It's very, this is very sped up. So it's kind of a slow process, but trust me, take your time and it will look like this is like printed onto your wood, your project. It doesn't look like it's glued on at all. After it dries completely, you can go over it with some Mod Podge to seal it and make sure those edges are very sealed. So now comes the process of just attaching your beads to this little medallion that we've made here. So I just uh, feed through the twine on there and you can do this in any manner or fashion that you want to. Um, I just pulled it through and tied it off there. And then I like to have a little bit of a tassel. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It just depends on how it's going to be. But just a quick overview on how I do a tassel. I just wrap it around 10 to 15 times around my hand so you end up with a big loop of twine. And then I like to put something through it. I'm just using, as you can see, a paintbrush this is going to create that little loop at the top of your tassel and then you just tie another piece of twine below that paintbrush and wrap it around another like five to ten times to kind of create that little bundle of twine there and then I just tie it off and now you just go ahead and I cut the loops and then I get them all the same length there with my hand and cut them as close as I can to be straight now the trick that I love is I take a little bit of water and spray it and kind of comb it out and you can see that there are some little stinkers there that were not cut to the same length so you can really get your idea of how close to level you are there and that water helps to relax the twine so it dries nice and flat and it doesn't go like completely skewampus like most of the twine tassels do so that's a fun little trick there and I just got that little spritz bottle just at Dollar Tree it comes in like a two pack there. I just tie this onto the end of my beads and then I use just a little bit of hot glue to secure that knot and that's it. There we go. I think this turns out so cute. I love it and it does not look Christmassy, right? <laughs> I guess maybe the colors do, but it will all work when everything is together. But I love how this turns out and I'm very pleased with it. It is always so satisfying to see all of the DIYs come together. I absolutely love how all of these look. Now this is a little bit of an unconventional tiered tray. I made this little bench a few videos back. I'll leave the link to the to it down in my description box also. But I love doing things a little bit different and non-traditional and I love how they all looked styled with this. But these all would work on just your traditional tiered tray as well. Which one of these was your favorite projects from today? I would love to know down in the comments and also drop me an emoji of your favorite fruit as well while you're at it. I would love to see all of the different types of fruits that come through. Remember that this is part of a playlist. That link will be down in my description box. All of the creators participating got to choose whatever fruit they wanted and do a tiered tray themed after that fruit or multiple fruits. There's gonna be so much inspiration there and it'll be so fun for you to watch. I would like to thank Missy for hosting this with me and Char for guest hosting with us this month. Remember to check out both of their channels. And as always, remember to be safe, be smart, be nice, be happy. Choose to have a good day because you are amazing. Thank you so much, guys. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed the video that you just saw, here's another one that you might enjoy. And as always, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and have an amazing day.